One of the biggest services we provide as physiotherapists is treatment of strains and tears in muscles. Unfortunately though, when most people actually incur this injury, they don't have immediate access to a physiotherapist. In some cases, it can be even a few days before they get to see a physio. As such today, I'm going to give you a guide on how you can minimize the impact of a strain or tear. If you can follow these three simple steps, then you will have taken the action you needed to to minimize the impact of the injury. It's very important that you do exactly as I direct as the steps that you take now have changed to what you may have been taught years ago. As medical conditions are further researched, the steps taken to manage the conditions change and alter. This change is good as it leads to better management of injuries and pain. So let's assume that you've incurred an injury of some type. It's most probably a muscle strain or tear. The moment you feel the injury occur, you need to stop. Once you've stopped, you need to take immediate action to control the swelling and prevent further injury. To do this, we use a simple acronym called PRICE. The P stands for PROTECT. You should protect the injured area by applying elastic bandages, slings or a splint. Obviously, what you apply will depend on where the injury is and the severity of the injury. The goal here is to protect the affected area from any further harm. Next, the R stands for rest. Do not attempt to get back out and run it off. Doing this could make the injury significantly worse. You need to rest the injured area for at least 24 hours. The actual rest period may need to be longer, but a professional physiotherapist can only assess this. At this initial stage, you just need to take immediate rest so that you don't do any further damage. Once the injured area is protected and is being rested, we move on to the I in the price. The I stands for ice. You should immediately ice the injured area and keep the ice applied for 10 to 15 minutes. You should repeat this icing procedure every hour for the first two to three days. This means you'll be applying ice for 10 to 15 minutes of each and every hour for the first two to three days. When you're not icing the injury, you should be compressing it. Compressing is the C in price. You can simply compress the injured area by wrapping it with an elastic bandage. Be careful that you don't wrap it too tightly though. I've seen some people compress it so tightly that it limits the blood flow to the area. You do not want to constrict blood flow. In an earlier podcast, I talked about inflammation and how inflammation is the body's natural response to injuries. During this initial period, your body will be sending white blood cells to the injured area in an attempt to repair it. This is why it's so important to maintain good blood flow so that the white cells can enter the affected area and start doing their job. The final thing in the price formula is the E. The E stands for elevate. If possible, you need to elevate the injured area above the person's heart level if possible, for at least 24 hours. So when you first feel a muscle injury, you should control the swelling and prevent further injury by following the PRICE acronym. Once you have these things under control, the next thing to look at is controlling the pain. Obviously, a muscle tear or strain will come with pain. You should look at taking an over-the-counter pain medication like ibuprofen recommended by your local pharmacist. These should be sufficient to minimise the pain you are feeling. It's unlikely that all the pain will go away, but you can manage it effectively with over-the-counter pain relief recommended by your local pharmacist. Be careful though. Ensure that you follow the dosage directions on the packet of the medication that you take. If you have any questions, you should seek the advice of your local pharmacist. Now that you have your pain, swelling, and injury prevention under control, it's time to actually move forward and get a proper diagnosis of the problem. This is where you should make an appointment to see a physiotherapist. The sooner you can make the appointment, the quicker you can get to the root cause of the problem and get it fixed. The longer you leave it, the longer it will take to fix. As a physiotherapist, 
I prefer to see patients as soon as possible so that any treatment or intervention needed can be performed prior to the muscle getting more damaged or it's starting to heal incorrectly due to poor scar tissue stimulus. If you find that it's a few days before you can see a physio, you should continue to ice the affected area every three to four hours for at least that next few days after that initial more intense 24 hour period. I hope this helps you with the steps you should take to minimize the effect of any injury you incur. As always, if you need any expert advice or help, you can always contact us.